Okay, may gabi ka na itong tanan mga kaiksunan, mga kagalaan diyan ni Kristo. And welcome back ng sub dining atong pagtuon sa atong book study and discussion. Uh, Nagauluhan, Jesus Loves the Church and So Should You by Earl M. Blackburn. So we are now in chapter 4 sa atong pagtuon ni ni sa atong book study. O padayan na ito ni nga pagatunan diyan sa grasya sa ginoo. We are now in chapter 4, Jesus loves the church and so should you. The centrality of the church in redemptive history. Okay niya ang atong pag-susihon ka ron, o atong pag ang pagka-centrality, ang pagka-sentro sa iglesia. Labi na diha sa kaisaysayan sa pag-luwas, paglukat sa Diyos, diha kang ginoon sa Kristo. Sa iyong mga katawahan, pinagi sa iyong kamatayong dito sa cross sa Kalbaryo. But before ta mo ato sa unahan, at na usap kita sa mga pag-ampo, ay tagtabang sa ginoo, nining pagtuon sa iyong mga pulong. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, our Gracious God, Ikaw mong ipaslamatan, nining lain na po nga adlaw, uras, nga gihatag ka na mo, alang sa pagtuon, nining book study, sa iyong mga pulong na uh, uh, Gitunan sa mga theologians, labi na ni uh, Earl Blackburn. We pray, Lord, na ikaw ta mag-auban ka na mo, maghatag ka na mo o kaalam. Labi na sa mong pagtanaw ni ni, pagtuo ni ni, o mining among discussion, kauban sa mga katawahan o mga magtutuo diha ng Kristo. Bisan pa sa mga katawahan na wala pa diha ni Kristo o mga pag-ampo, na ikaw ta mag-convictar sa nang kasing-kasing na makaila sila diha kanimu ginoon. Labi na sa mga katawahan na nag-profess that they are a Christian. Panwapang yun na bilong diha sa usaka lokal ng iglesia. We pray Lord, ngayon mo silang ablihan sa ilang unang nagsingkasing. Ikaw makikistorya kanila karon. Pinagi sa iyo mga pulong, bisang paniling book study, book discussion. We pray for your help. We pray for the help of your Holy Spirit. Kamawag yun mo guide ka na mo, maghatag ka na mo katinawan, kaalam, pinagi sa mga pulong. This we commit to you Lord. For the glory of your name, may you help us, may you guide us, may you open our minds, and our hearts, and, our, and our understanding. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So the centrality of Christ, or the centrality of the church, rather, in redemptive history. So mo niya itong padayon nga tanahon ka ron, nining study na to, pang Earl M. Blackburn. Akong basahon, matut pa ni Earl Blackburn, the centrality of the church in redemptive history. So Ephesians chapter 3 verse 21. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus and to all generations, world without end. Amen. Kung ato na basahon dri sa New American Standard Bible sa Ephesians 3 verse 21. Gingon dri no? To Him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Igon siya ang writer ni ni, What do we understand by the term redemptive history since the fall of mankind into sin in the Garden of Eden and the great promise of a Redeemer's coming forth from the seed of the woman to bruise the heel of the serpent? And it is recorded sa Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 after the fall nga ang ginoo nagsaad diha sa iyang grasya nga there will be a seed of a woman to bruise the heel of the serpent. And this seed is referring to the Redeemer, the finality of the coming of the great Redeemer that is the Lord Jesus Christ to bruise the heel of the serpent. Mauna nga, doon ay doha ka religion sa kalibutan. The religion of the light and the religion of darkness. Ang mga katawahan sa Diyos, diha kang Kristo. Ang mga katawahan, diha sa yawa. The light and the darkness. And it is because of the result of sin. Pero ang Diyos, diha sa iyang plano. Sa kaluwasan sa iyong mga katawahan. Aduna siya ay gihatag the first evangelion na din ang Diyos mismo may nagtudlo, nagawali, 
ng tao adunay paglaong. So Genesis 3 verse 15, And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise you on the head, and you shall bruise him on the heel. God has been at work in the world, actively involved in uh, redemption, that is rescuing and releasing people from sin and bringing them into fellowship with himself. As the old saying goes, history is his history. This is especially evident in the great redemptive acts throughout history. So, I ni Earl Blackburn, and I agree, saying that this is God's history. History is his story. And this is especially evident in the great redemptive acts throughout history. In the course of the long and storied annals of time, the triune God has worked and operated through covenants from the covenant of works with Adam. So, morning mga terminology, gagigamit sa mga theologians, the covenant of works. Kitawag usap kinig the covenant of creation and probation dito sa Garden of Eden, exclusively nga tukang Adam. The covenant of works with Adam and the first manifestation of the covenant of grace in Eden. So Genesis 3 verse 15 and verse 21. So verse 21, sa diha ng ang tao nakasala, he tried to cover his uh, shamefulness. Pero ang ginoo, in his grace, sa verse 21, sa Genesis 3, 21, the Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. To the culmination and fullness of all God's redemptive dealings with humanity in the new covenant, diya sa Jeremiah chapter 31, ato basahon, Jeremiah chapter 31, Verse 29. Jeremiah chapter 31. Verses uh, 29 to 34. In those days, they will say again, The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge, but everyone will die for his own iniquity. Each man who eats the sour grapes Sour grapes, his teeth will be set on edge. Behold, days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not like the covenant which I made with their fathers in the day, I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant which they broke, although I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. But this is, this is the covenant which I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them. And on their heart I will write it, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. They shall not teach again each man his neighbor, and each man his brother, say, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest of them, declares the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity, and their sin I will remember no more. And that is God's new covenant. This is the culmination and fullness of all God's redemptive dealings with humanity in the new covenant na tuman kini pag-abot diha kang ginawin sa Kristo sa Hebrews chapter 8, 7 to 13 sa atong book study. Hebrews chapter 8 verses uh, 7 to 13. Ako ni basaho, no? Yundari, for if that first covenant had been faultless, there would have been no occasion sought second for finding fault with them he says the Lord God behold days are coming says the Lord when I will effect a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah not like the covenant which I made with her fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt for they did not continue in my covenant and I did not care for them says the Lord for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days says the Lord I will put my laws into their minds and I will write them upon their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. They shall not teach everyone his fellow citizen, and everyone his brother, say, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, from the least to the greatest of them, for I will be merciful to their iniquities, and I will remember their sins no more. 
When he said a new covenant, he has made the first obsolete. But whatever is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to disappear. Now the Lord has been calling out a special for himself. And the writer of Hebrews makes it clear that this new covenant, this new covenant, which has its origin in the everlasting covenant has Christ as its blood shedding mediator. Same verse 13, verse 20 to 21. Hebrews 13, verse 20 to 21. Say, Gi, Ingo Deha, say, Hebrews 13, 20 to 21. Now the God of peace who brought up the dead, the great shepherd, who brought up from the dead, the great shepherd, the sheep through the blood of the eternal covenant, even Jesus our Lord, equip you in every good thing to do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. The writer of Hebrews makes it clear that this new covenant, which has its origin in the everlasting covenant, has Christ as its blood shedding mediator. Anong everlasting covenant mani? Tungod kay ang mianhis kalibutan is the Son of God, who is eternal, co-equal with God the Father, the Son of God, who always in existence with God the Father even before the foundation of the world, has now became flesh. He shed his blood as our mediator. Everlasting covenant. For all who believe in this era of the new covenant, the visible church is the central agent God uses to carry out all his redemptive purpose. So ang visible church, mo kini ang iglesia, mo kini ang gi lukat, sa hamili, gipakamatyan, sa kinabuhi, sa atong ginuong Heso Kristo. Na din iyang gi-redeem is the central agent God uses to carry out all His redemptive purpose. The church is the context in which God acts in the world. Paul the Apostle says, Unto Him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus, and to all generations, World without end. Amen. Nga na ka-amazing. Ang pulong sa gino. Nga diin. Diha sa kalibutan. Nga doon ay tulog ka institution. The family. The government. And the church. Ang ipakamat yan sa gino sa atong ginuong Isu Cristo, ang iyang ipurchase, maugyod ang iyang iglesia. Mauna nga, ang pagsimba ni Apostle Pablo sa Diyos, mingong siya, unto Him, be glory in the church, by Christ Jesus, unto all generations, world without end. And it is recorded sa Ephesians chapter 3, verse 21. And this verse of Doxology, a formula of praise to God, it reveals Paul's focus no? of the Christian life and ministry. You can see Eric Blackburn, his entire being revolved around Christ and his visible churches. He did not dare think of Christ without thinking of the church. Paul was sent out on his first missionary journey from the church at, at, at Antioch. In Acts chapter 13, verse 1 to 4. Now, diha sa iglesia, labi na diha sa propagation of the gospel, pagwali sa ebanghelyo, nga to sa mga katawahan, yung wala pa diha kang ginoon Isu Kristo, ang proper nga ilang gibuhat, sumala sa gikahimutan sa Dios ang iglesia yun, may magpadala o laborer diha sa ilang lokal nga iglesia. And this is recorded for us, Acts chapter 13, verse 1 to 4. Now there were at Antioch in the church that was there prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called 
Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and Manaen who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. Acts chapter 13 verse 1 to 4 verse 2. And while they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there, they sailed to Cyprus. So Holy Spirit, miingon nga, set apart sila Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So ang ibuhat sa iglesia, in church planting sa verse 3, they fasted and prayed. Ano ilang man yung ibuhat? Bisa clear na git kayo nga nanay mando sa Holy Spirit. Nagpakita kini sa ilang dependency sa gino. Nagpakita kini sa ilang pagpailalong, pagpaubos, pagpagsimba, pagpasalamat diha sa gino. When they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, nila ni Barnabas and Saul for the work to which the Holy Spirit has called them, they sent them away, and verse 4, so being sent out by the Holy Spirit, and the means nga gigamit ni Lord mong iglesia, they went down to Seleucia, and from there, they sailed to Cyprus. Mo ka na ang biblical nga pag-send o mga uh, missionary, bisan pa si Apostle Pablo, na ang local church nga nag, uh, nagpaluyo ni ini, o mga gigamit ni Lord as a means Aron sa pagtuman sa iyang kabubuton. And take note, they prayed before God. Now, sa Acts 13, 1 to 4, ingon pa ni, sa dugang ang isulti ni uh, Earl Blackburn, mayon siya, balik ta. Uh, here. Mayon siya, no? Everywhere he went, he preached the gospel made converts and established churches in Acts chapter 14, verse 23. When Paul finished his missionary journey, he reported back to the sending church sa Acts chapter 14, 26 to 28. Mauna nga, nagi sending church. Acts chapter 14. Ito ba? Basahon. Acts 14, 26 to 28. Giyundari, and from there they sailed to Antioch, from which they had been commended to the grace of God for the work that they had accomplished. And when they had arrived and gathered the church together, they began to report all things that God had done with them and how he had opened a door of faith to the Gentiles. They spent a long time with the disciples. So they reported it back to the sending church. He comprehended Si Pablo, along with John, the apostle, that when churches gather to worship God in spirit and in truth, the reason Lord Christ is in their midst, the Savior still walks among His. Salvation and sanctification has defined in the New Testament scriptures required a visible church the ministry of the word of god and the gospel as found in the church produce saving faith the church preaching of the whole counsel of god produces gospel holiness sanctification and growth in grace so maoni nadiha nga ang ebanghelyo giwali gitudlo gyud ug dasabtan sa mga katawhan sa Ginoo when there is the true preaching of the scriptures the whole counsel of God, Ingong Padre ni Earl Blackburn, and I agree with that, with him, it produce, produces gospel holiness, sanctification, and growth in grace. Mone na kanindot sa tinood nga, nakadawat sa tinood nga kaluwasan diha kang Kristo, na agib, makita yun sa iyang kinabuhi, ang pagkabalaan, ang pagtubo diha sa grasya sa Dios kinarabang pagtubo sa grasya sa Dios nagadepende siya kanunay diha sa tabang ug sa kusog sa Ginoo pinaagi diha sa pulong sa Ginoo Someone has said attempts to grow in Christ outside the church is like trying to swim without 
ever getting into the pool. Kita diri ni, Blackburn, sa gid ka, importante. Labi na sa mga nag-profess ng mga Christians. Kinahang lang gid sila, sila mo pa ilalong diha sa iglesia. Musulod diha sa iglesia nga din adunay magbalantay. Musulod diha sa usaka visible local church. Kaya daghan kayo sa atong panahon karon nga nag-angkon ng mga Kristohanon, pero walay mga churches nga din sila nahisakop. Nahimo sila nga latagaw ng mga tupa. Kung nahimo na usab nga questionable ang ilang Christian life. Kaya tinood nga Kristohanon adun nga makita nga obedience, pagpasakop diha sa lokal nga iglesia, nga din ang Diyos, nagbutang og mga under shepherd, mga pastors, elders in the church, for them to grow in sanctification, in holiness, and in the word of God. Mo nang ni uh, Earl Blackburn, attempts to grow in Christ outside the church is like trying to swim without ever getting into the pool. The church and its God-ordained leaders serve as a bulwark to guard believers from going astray and falling into apostasy. Godly pastors and elders are there as counselors and friends when believers enter hard times and difficulties. Being a member of a church will give Christians the love and service of fellow members. Brothers and sisters in Christ will be there to weep when one weeps, rejoice when one rejoices, and walk side by side with one another in the Christian life. Call you to think lightly of the church is to think lightly of Christ. How contrary is the thinking of many Christians today. And sadly, sadly, daghang kayo mga Kristohanon na nag-angko, nag-profess ng mga Kristohanon na na-fail na ining area because of the ignorance of the truth. They have a zeal for God. They have a zeal to proclaim Christ and they have the zeal to say that they are of Christ, that they are a Christian. But the reality is that their lives is not really in obedience to the word of God. Because of pride, because of sin, because they did not understand kung sa yun ang iglesia nga nung gitukod kini sa Diyos, di ka kang ginawang Iso Kristo. Now, in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 21, yung pan Air Blackburn, is a crucial verse to understand, or a crucial verse to understanding Paul's mindset in this verse, Paul teaches six important facts about the church. Nato ni basa on Ephesians chapter 3, verse 21, and if you have your Bibles with you, smayo nga, inyong open usab inyong mga Biblia, aron nga inyong usab ko, masundan niya inyo po ma, uh, ma-meditate ang pulong sa gino. Ephesians 3 verse 21 To Him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus all generations forever and ever. Amen. Ganong crucial man eh. It's a crucial verse to understanding Paul's mindset in this verse, Paul teaches six important facts about the church. First, in all it does, the church is to be God-centered unto Him. Ang sa Ephesians chapter 3 verse 1. Unto Him. Ephesians 3 verse 21. To Him be the glory into in the church. The church is to be god centered what is the holy bible all about it is not primarily about science medicine history economics music social order jurisprudence marriage and family civil government or host of other subjects though the bible speaks with authority and infallibility on each of these subjects and more the holy bible is primarily about one subject god a mega clue is given for us in the very first verse of the Holy Bible, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Diba? Sa Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, it states that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It's a literal pag translation. In beginning, 
God created the heavens and the earth. The Bible did not prove the existence of God. It simply assumes that God exists. And in history, this is God's story. This is His story. Because He is the sovereign God who is in control over all things. That's why in the church, God must be centered. In the beginning, God Thus, the church as the people of God is to be centered upon Him in all His being, essence, nature, and attributes. Nindot kayo mga kaigsunan, ugmaok ni ang atong heart diha sa atong pagpangalagad sa gino. Ang atong mind, ang atong singkasing, ang atong kinatibukan is consumed of the person and of the being of God and of the words. God, so that we may not sin against God Himself. Second is that the church is to be purpose-centered. To Him be the glory in the church. The church is to be purpose-centered. Be glory. In other words, in Pasi Er Blackburn, Blackburn, the church's main purpose is to exist for God's glory. The glory of God is central to Himself. And it is central to the church existence. Everything God does is ultimately for His own glory. Likewise, everything the church does should be for God's glory. Mautakini ang dili nato dapat hikalintan. Nga ang tanan nga gibuhaton diha sa iglesia, ang iyang ministeryo, ang iyang tumong, ang iyang goal is for the glory of God not for the glory of the church, not making a name of a church that the people will tend to forget God whom the church is preaching and talking about and pointing to God's glory, and honor, and leading us to worship. Ang kuyaw kung ang mga tao, ang iyan ang himaya, muna ang alan sa iklasya na ang ngalan sa mga preachers. Hindi sa mga preachers, they proclaim God, they proclaim Christ. Now the people idolizes preachers, teachers of God's Word. Kalimot na sila that they are helping them, the people, to point them to Christ, to God, to give Him the glory and honor. The glory of God is central to Himself and it is central to the church existence. Now, the third, thirdly, or third, yung pani Earl Blackburn, the church is to be organization centered. Organization centered. To Him be the glory in the church, so verse 21. In other words, the church is a visible, structured body with a regenerate recognizable membership that carries out its responsibilities with a constitution and order. We know that numerical records were kept from Pentecost forward. And if you read the book of Acts, kung inyo na kining nabasa, Ixoon, and I believe na inyo na kining nabasa, na mga believers, because they will really study the word, they will meditate the word of God, Sama sa Berean Church, they search the scripture eagerly, examining kung inilang isulti ni Apostle Paul o ni Silas, naabag yun diha sa Biblia. Tanawa, sa diha nga ang Gospel giwali, sa Acts chapter 2, 41, chapter 4, verse 4, the Lord added to the church those who are being saved daily. So naang visible, structured, regenerate, recognizable membership that carries out its responsibilities. Acts 2 verse 41. Sa higing on dihan. Higing na pulong sa higing So then, those who had received His word were baptized. That day, there were added about 3,000 souls. They were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. So, ang ginoo mo ay nag Acts chapter 4 verse 4. Higing on dihan. But many of those who had heard the message believed, and the number of the men came to be about 5,000. Grabe kadaghan, no? Grabe kadaghan. 
and then you save the Lord. Fourth is that the church is to be Christ-centered. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 21. To Him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. It must be Christ-centered. Monigingo ni Blackburn. Fifthly, the church is to be, uh, fourth, the church is to be Christ-centered by Christ Jesus. Christ is revealed in the scriptures as is the full and final manifestation of God. Therefore, the church is to feature every facet of his person to focus on every aspect of his word. Muna kong ang iglesia, dili na mo si Kristo mo na sentro nini. Dili na si Kristo ang nahimaya may tabo yun diyan sa iglesia. It will be a synagogue of Satan and there will be false converts kung giwali ang itudlo diyan sa iglesia, dili na si Kristo. Wealth, health, and prosperity that is centered on the efforts of man and the works of man to be good before God apart from the righteousness of Christ. The church will truly produces a non-regenerate members, non-regenerate people who think that they are saved, that they are bound to hell. On ang iglesia, it must be Christ-centered. It must be marinated in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. The church is to feature every facet of His person and to focus on every aspect of His world. The church must know of the person of Christ, why Christ is born, why Christ came, who the Lord Jesus is. Kinahanglan nga masamta na diha sa iglesia. Aro kita mutubo diha sa tinuod nga pagkaibalo sa krasya kaluhoy sa Diyos. Fifth is that the church is to be generation-centered. Yung hindi ha, through all ages, to Him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever. Or through all ages. Or literally, through all generations. The church is to minister and to declare God's truth to every succeeding generation. Are you following me? The church must not yield to the present generation or be manipulated by its cultural whims and fancies. Each generation must yield to the truth of God as revealed in the Word of God and proclaimed by the church. Generations change, but God's truth does not. Beware of the persons who says truth changes. Tayan ko na. Labi na sa atong generation karon mo yung sila that is an old story. The Bible is ancient. Dili na nakaroon because we're living in a, in a modern world, in a modern times. Para nila outdated ng scriptures. No! The truth is the same truth. And the lies of the evil is still the same old lies. Bisang pa kung sa kabago ang panahon karon because of the deceitfulness of the heart and because of sin the heart still remains the same apart from the sovereign work of God in regeneration by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Six is that the church is to be eternity-centered, world without end. To Him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. It must be eternity-centered. Ang iglesia, ang iyang consciousness is not only living for today, but living throughout eternity with His Savior, with His God, with His Lord and Savior. It must be eternity-centered, world without end, or literally from the age to the ages. God has put eternity into the hearts of His people and the church lives out its life with eternity in view 
central to all God's redemptive purposes in Christ Jesus and the primary instrument for accomplishing them in the earth is the church. Mona nga grabe ka bless. Ka blessed ang iglesia. Dili tungod kay ang ayan ang iglesia. Dining kaluwasan nga iyang nadawat diha kang Kristo pinagi sa iyang grasya. But because God is gracious and because God has promised to himself that he will save his people from their sins, that's why he sent to us. He sent to us his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray nga mawunta na ang message nga dili na to makalintan nila binakaroon sa atong Christmas season. May Christ be the center of our celebration. May Christ be the center of our proclamation and in our gathering and in our celebration. Dili unta si Santa Claus. Dili unta si Santa Claus may iwali diya sa iglesia. Dili unta ang mga gifts kundili ang persona ni Kristo nga di may gihatag sa Diyos nga mahan alang sa iglesia, alang sa kaluwasan sa mga katawahan sa iglesia, mawakin niya ang ipakamatya ni Kristo. Mawakin niya ang iyang ianhi. And if you remember the word of God sa Matthew 1 verse 21, when Christ shall come, mayingong yun si Lord sa Matthew 1 21, conception and birth of Jesus, she will bear a son sa papakita sa angel sa damgo ni Joseph kasi si Joseph nagplano na nga iyang bulagan si Maria giingon ni sa angel nga tukang Joseph Matthew 1 18 na itong tanaw no? marita mag end nga verse ang main point na ko nga gusto na ko ipakita dari is that ang gianhin ni Kristo sa iyang pagluwas mo king iyang mga katawahan ang mga katawahan nga mao kining iglesia nga din gitukod diha kang Ginoo Hesus Kristo in the new covenant with his blood Matthew 1 verse 18 and following diun the renown the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows when his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph before they came together she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit and Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, desired to put her away secretly. But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for that which has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for it is he who will save his people from their sin. Wala gingon dere that he will save those who will become his people if they will believe, if they will repent, if they will become good. No? Gingon sa scripture, for it is he who will save his people from their sin. Si Kristo may muluwas sa iya ng mga katawahan. Gikan sa ila mga salam. Verse 22, Now all this took place that what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet might be fulfilled, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. So the son is God with us. Ang Dios kauban nato, The incarnate God. Ang Dios na himong tao. The son of God. Umaw ka na si Ginoong Kristo. Joseph arose from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took her as his wife, and kept her a virgin until she gave birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. Grabe ka, amazing. Because can in Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 and following, it is the fulfillment of God's promise back to the Garden of Eden that the woman, her seed, the seed of the woman will going to bruise the heel of the serpent. Muna nga ang yawa, kanunay yun nga pildiro. Ang mga anak sa yawa, sons of the devil, sons of the darkness are always being defeated. 
labi na sa pag-abot sa anak sa Diyos. Because God will save His people from their sins through the death of Christ. Muna nga ang centrality of the church in the redemptive history focus upon the person and works of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this person and works of the Lord Jesus Christ, ang iyang plano sa redemption is focus upon His people, the called out ones, called out ones from the darkness into light, called out ones from sin into the kingdom of His beloved Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. From sinner to saints, now being regenerated, washed by the blood of Christ, saved by His grace and mercy, for the purpose of glorifying God, worshiping Him in spirit and in truth. Mo na na kanindot mga pagsunan, ilabina sa atong pagtuni ni, the centrality of the church in redemptive history. And why Jesus loved us, loves the church, and so should you. Tungod kay ang iglesia sa tubangan sa ginoo. Grabe ka hamili. Grabe ka precious. Tungod kay ang Dios diha sa iyang grasya. Sa so iyang kaloy has promised himself to redeem his people to the praise and glory of his name. So alang kanimo, igala, igsoon, nga nag-angkon nga kristohanon apan wala pa nagpailalong diha sa iglesia now, now, now is the time to obey what the Lord God has commanded His people mga bitaw sa Matthew, mingong siya go therefore and make disciples to all the nations baptizing them in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit and law I am with you always even to the end of the age so katong i-baptize nagpasakop diha sa iglesia Katong nagpasakot diya sa iglesia, kanunay sila nga nagkupot, they keep teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. Not just nga ang atong pag-keep wala may produce o good works, kundi li nagresulta gito kini sa pagkinabuhi nga pagkabalaan, sumala sa tabang sa iglesia. For apart from Him, we can do nothing. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, our gracious God, Ginoong Diyos, kami nagkapasalamat diya kanimu. Labi na ni ng among pagtoon. We are now in chapter 4. Lord willing, next week we are now in chapter 5. Sa pagpadayan na mong pagtoon sa yung mga pulong. Pinagi ni Earl Blackburn sa yung pagtoon ni ini. Kung kauban sabi niya gino sa pagtanaw sa iyong mga pulong. We pray that may you guide us. We pray, Lord, that may you uh, spare us from error. Kadoon ay may mga butang na uh, uh, sa iyo na pagtudlo si Blackburn. May you help us. May you guide us. Take it book study. Ang imong yung mga pulong may final authority, may sufficiency. And the books that men wrote, dili kini may sufficient, dili kini may final authority mubisang pa sa abong practice as a Christian. We pray, Lord, may you help us to grow more in your word as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens one another. Lord, we thank you for this time. May you build us. May you help us to grow in the knowledge of you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, salamat mga kaigsonan sa inyong pag-uban ka and I hope to see you next week, Lord willing, sa atong pagpadayon sa pagtuon sa pulong sa gitu. Ayong gabi o daghang salamat sa inyong pag-uban ka na. God bless.